Hi, everyone. Welcome back to season three of the Hot Combs and Popcorn podcast series, okay? For those who don't know, my name is Brianna. My name my is name. Fuck, every time. Every, <laughs> every time. time. <laughs> yeah. What's the what order? I, what? No, I still don't know. Normally, I'll just pause, and I'm like, is it Ooh. me? Bobby. Oh, oh okay. okay. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let's okay. just pretend like that didn't happen, but keep this in the edit. And then, zoop. hi, everyone. Welcome back to season three of the Hot Homes and Popcorn podcast, the movie series, specifically the box office. For those who don't know, my name is Brianna. My name is Bobby. And my name is Danielle. And one of the things we like to do here on this series is review movies in Black culture that we should have seen by now, okay? And at the end, after we discuss our thoughts and feelings as zillennials, we will be rating the movies from one to five hot combs because that's our brand and don't try to steal it, okay? So our movie for today is a classic, one that I've heard many of times in my life, I'm sure my co-hosts have as well, Eve's by you. So it was written by Casey Lemons, directed by Casey Lemons. It was there debut directorial debut uh starring journey smollett samuel jackson megan good lynn whitfield debbie morgan diane Car carroll um roger guinevere smith and many many more um pretty much the faces of the 90s um eve's bayou had a release date of november 7th 1997 is rightfully rated r and is an hour and 49 minutes so if you've never seen eve's bayou like i had never seen it it does, follows a 10-year-old girl named Eve Baptiste during the summer of uh, one of her grades in Louisiana. And, you know, her family's affluent exterior starts to, uh, starts to um, fade. The facade is gone. Her daddy cheating. And, you know, she basically turns to her aunt and a voodoo witch to kind of help her work through her, her feelings and thoughts and opinions. Okay, so... First, before we go into our highlights and lowlights, ladies, I want to ask you guys, how do we feel about Eve's Bayou? Well, you know, to start off a movie saying the summer I killed my father, I was 10 years old. That That's a way to start a movie. You know, I was locked in from the jump. Okay. And I just in general, it was a great movie. Okay. I really didn't know where we were going. I have heard of this movie, like you were saying, Brie, in the past, but I never watched it. And so it it gave me what I what I didn't know I needed. You know, it was very it was very Louisiana and it really um touched to the idea that we have said in the past, don't mess with voodoo. Okay. If you don't know what you're doing, do not mess with it. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. What about you, Bobby? Danielle, you are absolutely correct. Um, yeah, this movie is one of my faves, I must say. Um, I have seen it once. Actually, I watched it New Year's Day 2021. No, 2022. I know that because of Letterboxd. It has my first watched for the year. But yeah, that was the first time I watched it. And um I definitely I was under the impression that like I watched it once I do not need to watch it again great fantastic don't ever want to see it again because of that scene um mm -hmm. but now that I rewatched it I was like no nah, it's worth a rewatch it's it's worth a rewatch um it's great um I, we'll get into it more but overall I enjoyed it um, you know, it's going to be a hill that I stand on to the day that I die. I don't know what was happening in the 90s. I don't know why y'all movies were so long and why y'all had kids kissing adults. I just don't understand oh, Lord. what's happening. I, you know, immediately when that scene happened, I was like, I need to find out how old she was in this movie. And... I, you know, the movie was so much more than that scene, but also that scene is so much more than the movie. But I like the movie. 
Um, you know, I feel like everybody acted down in the movie. I really enjoyed it. You know, we can never have just one smullet in the movie because I know her little brother was like her real life little brother. I was wondering, you know, I love the character choice with the hair colors. And I wonder if, you know, those with the auburn type of hair, if they are the ones that are going to be more susceptible to like seeing things. I mean, I definitely enjoyed the storytelling aspect of it. You know, Journey Smollett, she'd been acting down since she was a child. She was on a uh, full house. And they made that baby cry, okay? I was thoroughly entertained by her anytime her and her auntie was on screen. Um, I feel like this might have been like one of Samuel Jackson's first like movies because I know he started when he was like in his 40s. And I just, you know, I liked the movie. I cannot say that I did not like the movie. Um, but why don't we just go into our low lights? and just get them out of our hearts and spirits. Can, so, can, can we yeah. start with the theme? Can we can we just get it out? Yeah. Um, I, I looked into, I, I did some research and apparently they filmed it like 15 times because they no, had to do- No, are you angles. serious? They had to do the, the version that Megan Good told and the version that Samuel Jackson told. Right. They were apparently both very nervous. I think Samuel Jackson was very rightfully nervous to be kissing a 14 year old. Um, I, I feel I'm, I'm so happy we are out of that point in Hollywood or at least people are too afraid to do it anymore because I know that Jenny Ortega kind of had something similar um, with her. She had a sex scene with like a teacher or something in a recent movie and it got a lot of corral, but at least she was of age, you know? Yeah. Like, I do know that some parents and children kiss each other like on the lips, on the face, right? And I do understand that's like a very non-sexual thing that does happen. Um, and I'm sure it happened back then as well. Um, I just, I just want to know why y'all keep having these babies kiss these grown ass men. I just need an answer for that. I need some, someone, sometimes you don't need an answer. No, I need someone to answer for that. And I need the answer to not be because it was the 90s. Okay. I need someone to talk about that because that's insane. If you've not seen the movie, don't, this is not the podcast to be watching. But if you have seen the movie, you know that in one of the scenes, it is, um, they kiss each other and it's a little bit more consensual than the second version of the scene. And like, they are, they kissing. It's a 40 year old man kissing a 14 year old for the sake of a story. Like they're kissing, um, you know, outside of the other stuff that's been happening with like Nickelodeon and things like that with child stars. I just wish I could give every child star in the nineties a hug because they was just using and abusing y'all. And I know that it seems very professional. I even saw a comment about it that was like, it's acting, what do you expect? But I feel like if that's where we're going to go, we might as well just let snuff films in theaters. Like if we're just going to say that things are supposed to be allowed because it's a movie, like it's, no, no. She was a whole, she was baby making, whole baby. Like it, I, you know, yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was pretty hard to watch. Like, mm -hmm. I, I was like this, like, <laughs> because what do you mean? Right. What do you mean you're making us watch this right now? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 It was hard enough the first time. The second time I was just like, oh, God, oh, oh. Knowing that she was 14, as she looks 14 as well. Um, I understand, you know, for the plot, maybe, but like, no, I feel like they there was so many different ways that they probably could have done that differently. Um, the 90s was just reckless, like as fuck. Honestly, up until still today, they reckless, but like <laughs> Back then, they really didn't give a fuck, like at all. The fucks are gone; they're out the window. Um, I wish it didn't happen, but um, the rest of the movie, 
great. <laughs> I don't know, man. That was gross. It was disgusting. My uh, notes I have in all caps. No, no, no. Ew, gross. Oh my God, stop. Make it stop. Because, yeah. I kind of I kind of wish that this was a movie based on a book or like based on a true story. Because at least you can blame the source material, you know? Yeah. But it seems like it was written and written for a screen. And it's like, that's crazy <laughs> that I, I'm going to be completely transparent. I'm gonna just start. I'm gonna just start scrolling past these parts of movies. Like if my reviews start sounding real crazy, like I don't know what I'm talking about, it's because I'm finna just start scrolling through movies. Like I'm not finna keep watching young kids kissing grown ass people and y'all saying it's okay because it's the '90s. I'm just not finna keep watching that. So you know, it was a good time. It was a good little movie. You know, I enjoyed the movie, and I do understand the point of it. Um, I think it's somebody's story. I do think it's real fucked up that she felt like. I don't know. I do. I, I don't know anything about probably personally who's gone through this, but I, I do know that is a thing where young girls almost like become obsessed with their dads in terms of feeling like they have to bring something to the table that their mom would like. They don't understand they're not supposed to have the same relationship with their dad as their mom. Um, but that it just felt very. Uh, I don't even know if unnecessary is the word. I feel like the thing could have happened without us having to see it. I agree. Yeah. I don't know. Or, I, I feel like they, it could have been that, like we didn't see it or not that, because I don't even want to see it for real, but like y'all could have hired a body double of someone who was actually over the age of 18 and just use different camera angles. So we don't see her, her face. Like, I feel like, there was multiple ways for Megan Good not to be kissing a 40 something year old man. Like, I don't know. It was it was just a little it was uncomfortable. Not even a little. It was uncomfortable. Like I it wasn't necessary. I I get it for the plot, but not for actuality. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. It does. You guys have other low lights? Um, I feel like the dad in general was a low light. Um, he was, even though he was supposed to be like this great dad or whatever, he really was a villain. Hecky. Um, he was cheating on his wife. Even his mama was sick of him. She said, you know, all these girls think that he's the second coming of Jesus, and he is literally just a doctor. And I was like, you know, it's kind of sad when your mama is is kind of done with you and your shenanigans. Um, I did not feel bad for his fate. Um, I also didn't feel bad about um, come on, what was Eve because she she got into that with the voodoo lady herself. Um, she the lady told her if you don't know what you're doing, like make sure this is what you really want. And she's like, yeah, I want him, I want him gone. Okay. And then she's like, what happened? Like, what's going on? Blah, blah, blah. And I don't feel bad for um the dad because he taunted the husband of the woman that he was sleeping with. He oh, said, right. Don't say another word to my wife again. And what did he say? Good night, Maddie. Well, now you're shot. Like, I don't I have I have uh, this is Brianna. If Brianna wrote this, mm -hmm. I would have had her take the hair and then they find out it was that dude hair instead. And that's who she really put the curse on. I would have wanted to do a little ju -ju, ju mix it up. I'm not gonna lie. I did hear them talk in the beginning. Kind of made my brain kind of like X'd out her saying she killed her daddy. But if that wasn't in the beginning, it would have been real good writing I think it would have even showed the dangers of this more if it was actually the hair of like her mother's lover or something like that. Like say if that dude did, you know, start um, getting jazzy and stuff with the mom, uh, the Guinevere guy, the one who's in everything. Um, if he had, she had pulled his hair out the comb, didn't know, thought it was her daddy comb. And then it was a little different, you know? I feel like once the whole like, 
stuff started happening and like Megan Good's character got on her period, I feel like the plot kind of started to lose me because like it did tell you what was going to happen in the beginning of it. And that's exactly what happened. And it kind of like, I think they were trying to misdirect you because he had not been killed yet. But when he had, when he, when he died, I was like, well, yes. <laughs> well, yes, that, that does that makes complete sense. And I wasn't really like, oh my God, he shot him. No, well, well, yes. I think they were trying to use some adversions that wasn't really working too much and making you think like, oh, it was going to be the man hit by the train because it's on the train track. Because, you know, just like Raven, sometimes you don't understand your visions, okay? Sometimes you can't see them clearly. You think it's one thing and it's really something else. You know, you got to figure it out. Mm -hmm. But it just wasn't like, I feel like for you to tell us what's going to happen in the end, you got to really build up the plot to that. And I just feel like, although I watched this movie all the way through, I feel like I was watching Megan Good cry because she got her period. And then I was watching Journey Smollett go to Diane Carroll's character, the voodoo lady, and doing her little $20 voodoo. And then I just kind of looked up and she came back crying. And I was so confused. And I really don't know what happened between those two things for her to be yeah. upset that her dad was not dead. I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> like, please. Please put me back in because I don't know what happened between those two times for her to be surprised. Like, I don't understand. I was also confused because she she was poking the doll, right? She was thinking that this was going to make her, her dad die or whatever. And then she goes to the voodoo lady on the Thursday night and was she crying then? And she was like, what? Like, what happened? And she's like, well... Yeah, she's like, why he not, why he not did? And I was like... Right. And then she's like, well the coffin is buried like what are you what are you talking about like I never said nothing about a voodoo doll and then she got upset and I'm like well why are you upset that he's about to like he's gonna be dead at some point when you're the one that asked for him to be dead that's what I was confused about yeah I was also confused honestly, about that. that was not she very is, clear yeah. she is why he's dead because right. if she had never made the comments to Odu when they was outside, he would have never showed up at the bar to come get his wife. So she, I guess she was expecting her hands to be clean in the whole situation. But like, you can't, this is why they tell you not to play around with that. Because if, if you're doing it for ill intent, it will come back to you and it will, you know, come back twofold. That's why they tell you, like, if you're going to do it, make sure that you really are going to do it and you really are upset about this specific thing. And it was like she was poking the voodoo doll and went and tried to get a pineapple and did all da 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 da, da. And then she came in there crying. And I was like, did I miss something? Is it me? Am I the villain? Because I don't understand why she's crying. I guess because she thought it was supposed to happen sooner. Yeah. But it's not like, it's not, I, I feel like if that was the case, then they should have revealed that the sister made up the story differently than how it happened before killing the dad. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it should have structurally because she ran to her like she was regretting what happened. Why didn't it work? Da, 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 da. And then she went to her dad like, I'm so happy you're alive. I feel like that would make more sense story-wise if she found the letter from her dad of what really happened between her sister and her dad that way she could have been like oh my gosh I put a hex on him and it, yeah. it I mean it's still his fault but in her brain she like it wasn't even his fault he didn't even try to do anything is then it would make more sense then I feel like him actually getting killed would like make a difference you know but yeah. it's not not for me because I was like why are you running to the bar like oh daddy daddy we gotta go like come on let's go home I was like well didn't you just want him dead? Like, you just talked to the lady. You just found him. You wanted him dead. So you find him. He's still alive, talking to the mistress, by the way. And you're like, let's go home. Well, what's going to happen when you get home? I'm I'm confused. Like, are you... You could have died in your like, sleep. Girl. Like, you put the hex on him. The deed is done. Like, I don't, I don't know what... It was very confusing. Like that that whole scene, I, I really don't understand why she was upset and why she went to go get him. 
and why she was surprised when he died. Maybe she thought he wasn't going to die in front of her, but girl, like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, that's probably my, my low light, that and the, the kiss. Um, I think that they probably just chalked it all up to the fact, well, well, you know, she's a kid, so maybe like people would get it because, you know, she's only 10 and she doesn't really, her thinking isn't fully developed yet or whatever. But I really think that they should have explained how that switch happened because that right now it's giving plot hole a little bit. It's giving plot hole. Yeah, so, it's not giving the title, it's giving it was written in the wrong order. <laughs> like it's it's not giving she is having second thoughts. Cause it's not like from what I remember, he didn't do anything to make her not want him dead before finding right. the letter. And that's why I feel like if they had put the letter in there first and then he died, it would make a lot more sense why she was like tripping over the fact that he died. But like outside of that, it yeah the, the second half of the movie kind of fell apart for me mm -hmm. because it's like it's the sister went away like she she was gone the mom was gone because she went with the sister and then it, it was like what i don't know it, it was it was very confusing to me like nothing literally like you said nothing happened in between like it's not like the sister like changed her story or told her anything different she didn't find the letter so it literally just went straight from the lady telling her come back on Thursday night to Thursday night and then now she's sad so one plus one was equal in seven at that point like it just it was it was equal in seven with like an exponent like I was so confused <laughs> like not even lying um let's see did I have any more low lights I I didn't like Megan Good's character, but I don't know if that's like yeah. Yeah. I just it it was definitely I didn't like that in some of the some of the reviews that for this movie they called the her they call her fast. I didn't really oh. appreciate that. I feel like that's like what? It's giving black people blaming children type thing. Um fast is crazy. But I didn't yeah. I feel like, tell me if I'm wrong from what I see, because I know you saw it already, Bobby. I didn't see it. I feel like there was going to be way more spiritual and voodoo stuff going on in this movie. Like, it really, it wasn't really hitting the whole, the whole point of it being in the parish and being um, her great-grandmother's, like, town and da-da-da-da because she was a slave. Like, I feel like it wasn't, outside of the auntie, if the auntie wasn't there, this would be a very boring movie. Mm -hmm. to me. It was it was kind of weird because like they almost were downplaying it, like the yeah. the spiritual aspect of it, because they called the aunt crazy and they said that like what she does like is isn't right and blah blah blah. And I'm like, okay, but you're she like she's proven to have these things come true. Even the even the mother said. Like, oh, she's crazy, but her visions always come to light. And I'm like, okay, so why is she crazy? Like, what are, you, what are you talking about? So I don't know. It was very much like I wanted it to be, you know, very Princess and the Frog-esque. And it wasn't giving me that. Like, it wasn't giving me the voodoo that I wanted to see. And I feel like, um, I don't know, the, the whole thing of him being a doctor too, I don't know if it was that he was trying to like combat what his sister was doing so that he's actually doing real medicine or real healing or whatever. But at the end, he said that he really just had like a hero complex and like how he was really just pushing aspirin to old people. But all these ladies thought that he was the hero and that's what really like stroked his ego. And I think that's also why I thought he was a villain in this, but it just wasn't something wasn't there something was missing from this movie um yeah we saw that they're on the bayou yes we saw that the aunt had like you said the aunt was the best part of this honestly um but we didn't really tap into eve's like sight that much either like we would see her her like visions every now and then 
but we didn't tap into it until the very end of the movie, which I was like, that's kind of a shame. Like, we could have been exploring that more. We could have been, like, seeing her and the aunt do more stuff together. Like, I don't know. It was just, it wasn't clicking for me. To me, this seems like a really good origin story. I feel like this movie, a sequel would have ate with the with um Johnny Smollett and the aunt um but to me it's giving like girl discovers a, a power whatever you know like how every superhero has like a a tragic backstory whatever this is that tragic backstory that's that's what it seems like um so yeah I don't know I think like to me Journey Smollett was the best part of this movie that little girl oh, deserved mm-hmm. an Oscar like I honestly feel like most of the cast deserved at least a nomination I feel like the writers possibly only because like I really um enjoyed the I well coming of age stories in general one of my favorite uh genres and so I love um seeing children um be children running around playing it seemed like they were having a blast I was like damn also this is a great case study of why you should stay at a grown folks business for real um because you know you outside you climbing trees and playing with your little brother and you know getting into kids business that's what I like to see I think it was I thought it was fun um and to me the voodoo wasn't really like I mean I don't know I wasn't really here for the voodoo uh to me it was like nice addition but um, to me, the best part of the movie was seeing the dynamics between the siblings. Um, and then also the dynamic between uh, the mom, Lynn Whitfield, and the husband, the cheating and all that, like juicy, like real life drama. I'm into it. Yeah. You know? the actors were acting down. I mean, I think to go off of like what Danielle was saying with Pajos, like I would have loved to see a movie standalone. Well, first of all, I would I would have loved for this to be the direct descendants of Eve. Like I would have loved to see like Lynn Whitfield and her sister as a child because they do say that she's cursed, but they never say how she's cursed. And I just, I would have loved to have a little bit more backstory on all the stuff that was happening, but the cast ate down. They yeah, ate down. Um, like, it was crazy. I really liked it. I actually really liked Samuel Jackson in this movie outside of that scene. Um, he was, you know, we all know a smooth operator who think they just too slick. Too, too slick. Like, I don't even feel like the voodoo. I feel like he was going to get himself killed regardless if she had put a hex on him or not. <laughs> like, he was oh, just acting. Yeah. The, the situation happened yeah. because of him for the most part. He absolutely, he would have died without that. Like, I don't know. I feel like, you know, I love New Orleans, Louisiana, all that. Like, I I really wish for what I've seen in the, about this movie and like the hype around it, I really wish it, it delivered more on that part of it, on that spirituality part, on that voodoo part. And just of the like, culture in its own self they made it seem very mysterious but I feel like that would make sense if one of the characters was outside of Louisiana I feel like that's when you make them mysterious because you put them in a different place I would have loved to see like you said Journey Smollett have more visions um I don't know like a part of me really liked this movie and a part of me really like wish a lot of stuff was different because the actors acted down Megan Good acted down okay like she ate that she was I got my hair done and I walked in the rain and now what like, that was crazy first of all I, you, I, was like, Is this a-? I said what is happening like why would you go get your hair pressed from a different town you walking in the rain girl the curl's not gonna hold up first mm-hmm. of all second of all her hair Look crazy when she got. I know those roots. I don't know why they thought it was normal. They was like, "You wasted my time." She thought she ate, and I was like, "Okay, I look for you." Same, but honestly, that seems like something like a teenager would actually do. Like you, you literally, you think you're grown. (laughs) 
<laughs> when you're 14. Like I, um, yeah, I thought it was um, realistic and slightly charming, um, even though, you know, obviously she did something bad, but like, yeah, I was like, yeah, this seems like something that would happen. <laughs> People- I will. Go ahead. I didn't have, that sentence was going nowhere. <laughs> I will say though, Lynn Whitfield's character, at the very beginning of this movie, I thought she was gonna be like a villain. I thought she was gonna be like yeah. the mom who didn't care about one of her kids. And like clearly she had like a favorite in the beginning, but as we saw her like progress through the movie, you just see that she's really just a caring mother. Um and like I said, I got the wrong impression. At first I was like, first of all, you better hug Journey and her chocolates okay she's trying to help serve around the party and you like what are you doing and then, more like, chocolate. no chocolate like, for me she was yeah. she was, yeah. she, was. She was. um but as like the the movie continues i was like you know what she's low-key one of my favorite characters in this like mm-hmm. not even low-key she All is one mother. of my favorite. yeah her and the sister which can we get into it? Yes. Into it? Moselle. Down. Moselle. Down. Also, along with the sister, favorite camera work I've seen in a long time. They was using them mirrors, baby. Them mirrors was getting used. Okay. And, and like, I loved the storytelling of just like her, like her husband and the lover and like oh. Journey is watching through the mirror and I was just like, girl journey was eating it up like i was eating it up yeah like i was like and then what happened every time she had three lovers okay they all one loved her the most one did it up they were in the little mirror like she was seeing them and like i really kind of wish that like i wish that was her mom honestly like i don't wish that was the auntie i wish that was her mom and then maybe um lynn whitfield is the auntie because I'm assuming the whole like red hair thing means that you're one of the people that can, you know, see something or or know something. I'm assuming, and I'm just like, I wish that like they. I I just love them on screen, and I would have loved to just continue to see them. Like this could have been a great show of just the auntie and the and journey growing up, learning how to use her powers, giving very much bring the teenage witch but with the bayou like it just would have been such a good moment she ate down she was acting even with her new lover he said i gotta go find my wife oh she was like because i gotta find my wife so i can get the worst her to be with you i said oh say it again would have got me yeah it would have got me would've would've got- got- but uh, can we wow. talk can we talk about the new lover because there was there okay let me just he say was annoying he was annoying and he looked crazy. What was that bust down wig he had on? What was that? I, I, I like the hair. I kind of liked it. No, it, for me, his hair was giving the dude from um, is it Tales of the Crypt? What did we watch last time? What did we fucking uh, watch? Tales from the Hood. Tales from the Hood. We, I don't remember the hair. The the the, the, morti- the uh the guy who ran the funeral home, but with hair, but with like locks. I was like, right. oh, get this y'all. Like, I didn't really understand why he had to look like that out of all the things. But, like, I, but again, like, she was like, well, I don't want you to die. But then I was like, well, why is he going to die? Who cursed you? I need to know these things. Are they still in the family? But also, like, <laughs> they don't like, have to get married. Like, I don't know. Like, especially now that you know you're first, you don't got to get married. And she, was, she couldn't have children. She was childbearing. Like, I don't want to know the odd backstory. The aunt is just as fascinating. Just as for Moselle. Even though she was cursed, I love how she was still out here live, laugh, loving. Like, girl, go live your life. Little drink. You know, she was telling people. I really liked her visions when she was telling that woman about, like, her son and how she saw that he was about to be like in the hospital because he overdosed on the toilet, which is like a, such a real thing. People was always overdoses on toilets and drugs, some with bathrooms and drugs. And she was like, you need to go there because he's going to be in the hospital in a week. And I was like, eight down. Okay. I loved it. Mm-hmm. I loved it. 
I, now, what I would have liked a little bit more explanation on, so he she gave the little baggie of stuff to the woman whose niece used up all her money or something like that. And then I guess Samuel Jackson's character went and visited her. Um, I wish, I maybe it's just me and my brain. I didn't really understand the relevance of him coming to meet her as a doctor and then her pulling the bag out that the aunt gave to her. I wasn't really like understanding if she thought that like what she got from the aunt was going to help her get the dad. I don't know. I was just a little confused. Wait. Like when they were in the voodoo, they were in the voodoo and they weren't, they weren't, but they would like do it at the same time. Well, I remember I thought, I thought was, she, she had the little baggie, right? Because she remember she was like, what am I going to do? Like, she took all my money. I can't pay you. And she was like, keep this to your skin. I thought that that was going to, like, bring money back to her. That was my understanding. But then... When my came, Right. But when he came to her, he gave her some aspirin. I don't know what he gave her. And she's like, oh, well, it's okay, because I got this. And I'm like, well, what that got to do with your health? Like, I... You know, again... There's there's quite a few bahos. I mean, I do. I look. I said I love a villain. Samuel L. Jackson character was the fuck boy of fuck boys. He's the one that don't think he is, but everyone know he is because the fact that you take your daughter with you to work to other Crazy. people's houses, and then this woman's like, "Can you help me with my pain?" And he's like, "Well, where is your pain?" Oh, and yeah. like, so, where was your daughter when you was having sex with this woman? Hmm. What was her child? Oh my god. Woman? That like the audacity. I think parents that do and that parents. specifically are some of the lowest, dirtiest. Like, mm -hmm. how are you gonna take your kid to see the side check on a sneaky one? Apparently, one of the many apparently, like yeah, I was giving um Clay from Love Is Blind, but that's a different. I didn't watch that season, but oh, it was I so messy. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I believe you. But no, it was definitely giving like you are a harlot, sir. You are a heathen. Like he's everything that you could possibly not want in a guy. And Lynn Whitfield's character didn't deserve that. No. She no, really, she didn't. I thought she was gonna be crazy. And, and you know what? Crazy. The one scene where I think it was um Megan Good's character tried to stop her dad like from going into the room and she's like you know they mad at you da, da, da. and he walks in and it's the aunt it's the mom and it's Lynn Whitfield's character and he's like oh them they always mad and I'm like sir like you fuck you okay. bro I'm not gonna lie problematic but kind of funny the fact that they funny. went from that to him and Journey walking down the street I said wow they really are always mad this man ain't dead we ain't learned it just went from man they always mad he what a great day we're having i'm screaming <laughs> this man is too comfortable he see the mom and the sister together staring at him talking about him and he they always got something to be mad about sir you need to be in jail you need to be under the jail. <laughs> under the jail but i did get a little cackle during that scene um with the kids outside eavesdropping and megan good she's like you know you shouldn't be doing that whatever and then they're like, okay, whatever. And she says, I'm telling. And they just both immediately took off running. I was like, yeah, that seems like what it's like to have siblings. That that looks funny. <laughs> and then, because I'm an only child, but if I had younger siblings, I would do that. Because she, she not only did they run, she went and sat and listened to herself. It was okay. very much. Especially as an older sister, I just feel like <laughs> she was using her power. As an older yeah. sister, get them out of there. You know. She said, I'm going to say, it. She, they ran. She, okay, well, let me sit down. But then again, I don't know. It kind of makes me wonder, like, if something was happening with her and her dad before this, because she was, like, very attached to him. Like, almost, like, jealous of her mom, girlfriend yeah. type of attachment. And I do know things like that happen in real life, and it still does. But I'm just, I'm just, I would... I don't want to know about that backstory. I just want them to like say it. I don't need to watch it. You don't need to film it. But like for her to feel comfortable enough to think that if she kisses her dad to keep him, that it will work. What have y'all been doing in that house? What's really going on? Yeah, mm -hmm. I was thinking like, the same thing too. Cause I honestly forgot about the ending. I forgot that like 
technically she made it up, but I don't believe that. I, I think that's a lie still. I don't know. I, I don't believe I it. That, but I, I thought that, like going into this, yeah. I'm like, no, because I already knew that the kiss happened. So when I first started watching it, I couldn't even look at Samuel Jackson. And I'm like, no, they definitely were doing some beforehand. They they had to. Um, I don't know. But I've also never experienced an attachment like that. So I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I just it makes me wonder because he didn't show himself as a truthful person. So I'm not completely sure why they took his letter as like the truth. Um but to no fault of Megan's own, I can also children also can they also do that. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when they don't have a very healthy relationship and understand what love is, they believe that sexual love is how you show love to people. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't blame her at all, whether her version was the truth or his version was the truth. I think we should stop kissing our children on the lips and maybe we won't have this issue. Yeah, because then like the transition period after it's like, how do we Yeah, like I feel like I get it when you're when your child's like three, like two or three, but these are like growing girls learning about their bodies type thing. Um I also not really like a pet peeve, but I'm kind of glad we're out of this we're kind of out of this um well I don't know they kind of sort of did it in the other movie that I just watched but I'm glad we're out of this whole showing children in a underwear phase also very much I don't understand like she came in the house took all her clothes off got in her pajamas and I was like what is happening (laughs) like I feel like maybe the 90s was a little too real like I feel like they felt that they had to show stuff or it wouldn't seem authentic, but like, I promise you, if she would have just showed up with her nightgown on, I would have understood that she switched into it. You know, like, yeah. I would <laughs> They didn't have to. Because it, it, you don't have to, or like what like Daniel was saying, you didn't have to actually even show the two of them kissing. Like you could have just mimed it. You could have like, like there's so many other ways that they've done, even with like, okay, well, they don't really do this with kid actors anymore, thank God. So they don't really have to like walk around it so much. But I feel like, no, I'm not even gonna use that example. It's probably one of the worst examples to use of them showing other stuff. But okay, in one of the movies I just recently watched, just in case people wanna watch it, I'm not gonna say the name, but there is a character who hints or alludes to the fact that they were sexually assaulted by some men that their parent brought around and they did not have to show them having sex with the men for us to understand (laughs) that they had had been sexually assaulted with the men you know like I just feel like the 90s was just too honest for its own good it was just too explicit for its own good because I don't know which I don't know which storyline I'm supposed to take out of it am I supposed to take out of the fact that you don't mess with voodoo or am I supposed to take out of the the family dynamic. I don't know. They didn't really blend too well for me. So I'm not sure which one I'm supposed to, because they really emphasize that relationship with the dad. They let you know, and then they put it in, and you know, they really emphasize that. But I feel like the idea of Eve's Bayou was supposed to be don't mess with voodoo. But it's hard to say that when this is someone who deserves it. So I don't really know what you want me to do with that information. (laughs) But I mean, anyway, so we're kind of going into the highlights. Are there any other highlights that you guys had for this movie? Um, Yes. Um, Go ahead, Bobby. The scene where Journey, she was getting real big and bold with her mouth she she was real slick and when she started talking to her mama like that she i told her that she knows that your husband's cheating on you by the way um i love the way that aunt moselle checked her and was like and specifically what she said if you ever get careless with your mother's feelings again i was like wow that's crazy when i was 10 i had no idea that my parents had feelings necessarily you know it wasn't until i got older when i was like probably around like 
18, 19, 20, did I realize that you are um, a complex person, just like how I'm a complex person. Um, and so I feel like if somebody had told me that when I was 10, it probably would have made a difference in how I acted sometimes, honestly. Um, it's like, okay, I see you, Aunt Moselle. I see you. I see your game. And I like it. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Um, well, okay. This isn't a highlight. This is a little like kind of, well, okay. I don't know what it is, but kind of similar to how she was going off during Smollett's character when Megan Good's character was going off again. And she was saying, she walked up to the mom. I think this was after she told them that, that they were going to stay in the house for, for the next few weeks. Um, and she was like, are you really that immature? What is wrong with you? And I was like, Oh yeah. I was like, talking to who are you talking to? Honestly, the mom did not do enough because I was like, I will never fix my. I would have been like, um, Huh, I, I can't find who you're talking to. Well, can you point me in that direction? To tell you, like, they were being so audacious and so bold that I was like, was a, was a spell put on them? Because it was like, out of nowhere, Journey and Megan was on that with a mom. Like, like the mom was the villain. I don't know, Journey learned the word goddamn and didn't stop saying it for like Yo, 10 minutes straight. Like, that was kind of funny, though. <laughs> That was what nice, is yeah. not, like that was hilarious. to come into your house after you didn't left your mama house, went walk somewhere, got a perm or whatever, came across train tracks, yada yada yada, and then to be like, you really think we can stay in a house for that long? Are you that immature? Woof. Who are you talking? The way to? my the back of my like, hand would have hit that cheek. Nah, cause she ate that. She ate that slot too well. She, I, you wouldn't need to be on the floor like. Okay. I'm trying yeah, to talk. I can't. I can't find it. I don't know, oh. but I, I was I was shocked. I clutched my. I was scared. But listen, I was like, listen, because I was because they busted. was pushing. Lynn. They was pushing her. They were for no reason. For yeah. no reason, she was just worried, and because I feel like I did miss the point where she was told her children couldn't go outside. I don't know when that happened. When she had it was because of, like, of the vision. Yeah. So, yeah, but cool. I feel like all she did was tell her it's gonna get better in five years. Lean on your kids. I don't so not really understand. It wasn't hers. It was um the oh, aunt. She, she had a vision. Yeah, she had a vision, and she saw a little boy getting hit by the bus. So when when we see the kid being hit by the bus, she was like relieved because it wasn't her nephew. She thought it was going to be him. Mm -hmm. I it was that quick. It was real quick. Yeah. I caught oh. the other one, but I definitely missed out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had another low light. Okay. Um, I don't remember what the other one was, but one of them was, I guess the brother, the brother really wasn't, not I wasn't necessary, but like, he was just there. Like, they didn't really tap into him at all besides us seeing him like run screaming with um with Eve that one time when when they saw the snake but other than that he was just there he was just the product of being pranked and that was about it mm -hmm. he didn't serve much of much of purpose um it was, oh, you look like you yes the casting, generally speaking, I found to be realistic as far as like what the family looks like. Cause you know, like a lot of these movies, they are a victim of having like two dark skinned parents and then like one light skinned baby. It happens. But like sometimes it just be a little too, you know. So I thought that like this casting and how like they they got the family together, um, I felt like it really worked um the editor made this movie their bitch you know uh the editor kind of went off like went off. that yeah. transition when it started in black and white and it transitioned with the tree back into color fade down 
a down. It's like, well, I'm sold. Said, now this is what I'm talking about. This is what I need mm-hmm. in a movie. And it was a nice, it was a nice line, you know, not too, too long. Still could have took out like 10 minutes of it, but it was fine. I was confused. This was my, I was going to say a little light, but it's mostly confusing. What was the time period supposed to be? Like what? It was the 60s. Really? It was the 60s. Yeah. Okay. Which is why I think they were so gagged over Samuel L. Jackson, all the women, because, well, they live in an affluent town already, but um, in Louisiana, I think that's why the ladies were just losing their minds. A rich black doctor in the 60s, please. Please. Mm-hmm. They wanted him. I feel like the attire was more so given 40s, but mm-hmm. all right. I mean, because Eve, I'm assuming Lynn Whitfield and Moselle's mother is the woman who the slave owner had children with that saved him. I'm assuming. I, I don't think the lineage is like too far down from that person. Um, because when the slave owner daughter- died, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think Lynn Whitfield and her sister, like, that's their mom. That, because I'm assuming they're supposed to be mixed. They're Creole. Well, it's, but it's Lynn Whitfield oh, and sister, their sister in laws. Their whole mom was in the movie. I forgot about that. I think her mom is the one who had oh. sex with the slave. Because the Pope property, yeah, the lady that was in there. That must be the daughter. Because the property is, it was originally the slave masters. And then one of the female slaves, they saved his life with voodoo. He thanked her. He gave her the land. And then they had kids. And I guess fell in love. Yeah. Maybe question mark. I think that I just, makes, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. So I guess their mom is the direct descendant of those two people. Yes, because like the timeline would make sense then, because then that would be like her great grand grandparent. And if I'm thinking now, my I have my third great grandparent would have been enslaved. So like that's like a 50, 60 year difference or something. So like, you know, I feel like that makes sense. So okay, okay, wait, wait. Because um Samuel Jackson and and the aunt. They were brother and sister, right? And then Lynn Whitfield was obviously sister-in-law to the aunt, whatever. The grandmother, whose mother was that? I thought it was Samuel Jackson and the sister. I don't know. I thought the sisters were sisters. <laughs> oh, because when no. she went to the lady, she said, this is my sister-in-law. Yeah. Samuel Jackson is Aunt Moselle's brother. Mm-hmm. Cause so she, Lynn she, Whitfield is the direct descendant of the slave master and his slave woman. That Samuel Jackson's like family, him and the aunt. No, Lynn Whitfield. I'm confused. Lynn no, it would Lynn have Whitfield to married into the family. Right. Is that what I mean? Yeah, she married in. Okay. And the is the house and the property and everything on the house is that then Samuel Jackson's family. Yeah, yes. yes. I think it has to be because it's for the Baptiste family and that's his that's their last name. Yeah. So they yeah. Baptiste. Okay. So but the so grandmother whose be- mother is that? I'm a s- I'm well, going I thought to- that was I think that the I grandmother thought- is Samuel Jackson's mother because she was speaking Creole. Okay. So it would make sense if they've been there that so she would speak the language right she was talking to Lynn Whitfield like that was her daughter she was and there was one scene where she was like like, directly, like that was her daughter. Something. and she was like mother stop or ma stop or whatever she said so like oh. I was a whole... but that doesn't mean I guess you know that doesn't I mean, mean anything because when people get married they be, they be calling their spouses mother mm-hmm. mom whatever so i need a family i need a family yeah i need a family if I, because... had my book, I could have made one like last like what movie was I that honestly, oh uh, it was um 
the Denzel lady in the blue dress, devil in the blue Wait. dress. <laughs> I honestly thought Lynn Whitfield and Moselle were sisters. They were sisters. Mm -hmm. Okay. Shout out to you if you get the reference. They were sisters. That's what I thought. And then I thought Samuel Jackson married in in that the mother was their two mother. Uh -uh. Nope. So this is kind of another plot hole because it should be clear from the jump. I I want to say, well, okay, wait, 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 that the the grandmother is Samuel Jackson's mom because he she said she was talking about her son in the very beginning at the party. She was like, they always flock to my son, blah blah blah. So yeah, it's just a little confusing. Like I I feel like this could have been made more clear. But that's okay. I mean, it's not okay, but it is what it is. It is what it is. I, I don't necessarily think that affected the uh, the plot that much, though. Because the mom, like, wasn't the mom wasn't really... she, her, her identity really is not a micro snack. Yeah, clear. like, she wasn't really a huge factor. But I, I get it being confusing, like. Yeah. Um. Also, another low light that I had was what's her name is her name Moselle? Yes. Moselle. Yeah. Her saying, um what she was talking about like all her all her men like dying and she was what did she say? Hold on, I wrote it down. I wrote it down. Um she was basically talking about how like her curse and all this stuff and um she said oh my god wait where where is it? Hold on, hold on. Where is it? Oh, she was saying how like it wasn't her fault that they all died. And I'm like, well, girl, it kind of is. Like clearly well, curse. you know that's something you you know you cursed. Well, okay? I mean, but again, like I said, if she was you have to explain to me how she got cursed then. Because that's the true. woman said you're cursed. And she was she couldn't have children on top of that. So like why? <laughs> like, I don't understand. And I'm also like, it's the curse that if she gets married to them, they die. Because if that's the case, why are you marrying this man? First of all, that you have known for three days. That was another little light of mine. This random man shows up to your house. You let him stay with you, knowing that he's looking for his wife, right? You don't know him from Adam. He looked crazy with the bust down wig. And you, you all of a sudden... I'm gonna marry him because my dead brother said not to look backwards. Does it does it make sense? Because to me it doesn't. You're gonna get this man killed, basically. Yeah, I I strongly feel like they could have just been in a um a domestic partnership. You know? Like, um also maybe she like when she like read his future, maybe she felt like his aura. I don't know. I <laughs> I don't know, girl. I'm like, you couldn't feel Did the aura for the Huh? I'm like, you can't feel the aura for the rest of them, though? All the other dead husbands? But I digress. I just, I'm just, I'm just trying to get a family tree. I got a headache. Um, uh, is, I'm going to assume that I don't, I don't, I'm not even sure how I'm trying to figure this out no more. I guess the reason why they thought that him being a doctor was so special is because his grandmother was, question mark, but okay. I just don't know. Anyway, do we have any other thoughts about East by you? None, not a one. Um, no, I I think I said all my everything else I'll just say in the ratings well let's get to the ratings ladies what is our final rating for East Bayou East Bayou well I I actually did enjoy this movie even though you know there was a lot 
a lot going on, a lot of questions. Um, we already talked about the low lights in that one scene. Um, I I do think, however, the acting and the specific actors that were chosen for this film really did redeem it. Um, and yeah, that's that's really all I gotta say. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a three out of five. Three out of five high points. Okay. I think I really enjoyed this movie. I uh, am a huge fan of coming of age films that focus on the family dynamics specifically. And I feel like that, that was like the true core of the story. I feel like the voodoo was like secondary to the family. And so um, I, I think the writing was really uh, great in that regards. Um, and as for a directorial debut, I feel like she kind of hit it out the park, at least for the first one. And, um, yeah, I'm going to give this movie a five out of five hot combs. This is one of my favorite movies. Yeah. It's in my favorite movies of all time list on letterbox, which has like a hundred plus. So, and they're all the, all the ones in there are pretty much fives. Yeah. I'm gonna give it a five. I really enjoyed it. Um, I ate it up glued to the screen and um yeah it was dramatic the pacing was fantastic good writing great actors so yeah that's my rating um you know I went back and forth on what I wanted to rate this right because I just I can't disrespect Johnny Smollett with the low rating because she ate down her and the aunt, like, I just I can't do that. Um, I give this a 3.5. And here's why. I feel like it's a nice dessert 3.5. I feel like if you take out the kissing scene, it is a rewatchable movie. Um, I feel like um, the movie, the whole point of the movie, from what I understand, what I've seen, is it's supposed to follow this Creole family and their relationship with, you know, the family dynamic and trying to, you know, uh, navigate this world of spiritual voodoo and their ancestry, right? I feel like the only person who did the second half for real, for real was the aunt. And I just feel like there was just missed opportunities where things could have really like ate up, you know? I think like, what if, Journey has found the letter from the dad before doing the thing and before he died. And then she regretted it, but then found out that he was a lie and that she shouldn't, I, I just feel like, you know, it's very good. Definitely could be rewatched um, without that scene. I think this is a really good movie with a really good cast. The children actors out of this world. I hope this was one of the jumping platforms for the both of them, even though I know Journey Smollett was on stuff before here. Um, it was just like, I just feel like a lot of it was supposed to be some sort of mysticalness. And I just feel like it wasn't enough mysticalness. You know, I feel like I just kind of looked up and she was upset that her daddy was still alive. And then she was upset that her daddy died. And I was like, well, I don't understand. Which one do you want? You can't have both. Um, which I feel like was what Diane Carroll, which a goat, by the way, ate that scene up, all her scenes. She was mm -hmm. playing it. She said, oh, you came with a 20. Oh, you came with hair. You was prepared. Okay. Um, I can do nothing but appreciate seeing her in movies. Um, I just, I really liked it. But I do have to give it a 3.5. I do have to give it a 3.5. I feel like that's a fair rating. It's really good. And it actually like rates a little bit higher than what I usually see um online which is really good like 70 percent or higher and i feel like this is the first time i really like agree with like the rest of the world on a movie which makes me know i'm not crazy this movie is definitely good it can definitely be replayed i would love to see with this being um in 1997 you know this episode is coming out um in october i believe and you know i would love to see like a 30 30 year sequel, you know? Love to see Johnny Smollett as a still, Ooh. you know, 
working through that. I think that's really good because you can still use the same person as the main character and they can really show the growth of what it's like to be in that world in 2027. Um, but, well, I guess not 2027. I guess at that point, they'd be like in the 2000s or like the late 90s or something like that. But I still think that would be really cool to see. I think that'd be really cool to see. I think it has plenty of potential as a movie and can be built off of. I agree with Bobby. I mean, for this to be an opening movie with these many people in it, kind of ate down. Kind of legendary. It's kind of what you want in your directorial debut. And for it to still hold up, I mean, what can I say? But for me personally, it's going to be a 3.5. All right, ladies, um, do we have any other final thoughts on Eve's Bayou? Don't mess with voodoo. Don't mess with voodoo. Stay out of grown folks' business. Don't cheat on your wife. Yeah. Don't do that. Like, like be a decent person, you know? <laughs> Don't piss I, your I kids. Feel, I feel less inclined to feel bad for you when you doing shit that is pushing people over the edge, you know? And the fact that your daughter was like, oh, you gots to go, you're pretty shitty. If your own yeah. child is trying to yeah. do something against you, um, yeah. you might want to rethink your life choices. But uh, oh. if you're going to practice voodoo, stay safe. Stay Don't be safe playing with it. Also, I think that the opening line, you know, I killed my father when I was 10. One of the cuntiest ways to open a movie, I must say. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. yeah. Especially since it wasn't like a direct killing. Especially <laughs> when you find out how he got killed. Mm -hmm. But damn. Yeah. That's it. Well, that's been another episode of the box office here on the Hot Combs and Popcorn podcast. Thank you guys so much for listening. Again, my name is Brianna. My name is Bobby. <laughs> and my name is Katie. Period. And if you haven't already done so, please follow and subscribe to us on YouTube and Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Throw us a like, share this episode, and leave in the comments below. Have you seen Eve's Bayou? Did you see it when it first came out? Have you seen it again? Did you rewatch it? And what are your thoughts on it now? Um, and let us know if there's another movie you would like for us to review as well. You know, we do take suggestions. I believe a thin line between love and hate was a suggestion, you know, the color purple, things like yeah. that. So we be listening. We be listening. We be, be, we be joking and stuff, but we be listening. So leave us a review of the movie for yourself and let us know what you'd like to see in the future from us. And so as you guys know, um, those street lights, uh, they're on. I can confirm we are finally in winter sweater weather season in my brain. Okay, we're going to take off a month of Christmas for Halloween. And that means it's going to be dark for the next like five to six months. So we actually have to start going back in a little bit earlier. And I think we forgot that. So we got to skedaddle. Okay. It's been great talking with you guys, but we'll see you next time. Same time, same place. Bye everyone.